Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Man, I'm stoked to see you. So coming at you, kind of a, a part two uh, of a series that has some interwoven uh, thoughts uh, along the process and along the way. So if you haven't already done so, you can, uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below as well as right up here. So you can go check out part one, which is really all about uh, asking questions, right? It's all about asking questions and just presenting some things. Uh, so I'll talk about that video here in just a second and some of the response that we had. And then moving on, I, do, I did tell you then, and I'm going to tell you uh, right after we talk about the first video, uh, some of the uh, uh, news that I have for you. I don't know if there's a, another way to say it. I get some news for you. And then lastly, I want to get into the real meaning, the real crux of this conversation, which is giving yourself permission to doubt. Right? Giving yourself permission to doubt which is something I don't think that we do near well enough uh, in, our, in, our, in the bulk of our community, right? In that first video, we talked a lot about questions and the importance of asking pointed questions, being honest brokers of, of truth and honest brokers of facts, things that are quantifiable, right? And a lot of you brought so many good things to the table, and I gotta tell you, I was really surprised I threw that video up a little bit later than I normally do, at about 5 o'clock at night or 1700, my time. And it was, the response right out the gate was, was, it was very humbling. And just like on election night, overnight, everything stopped. Now some of that was to be expected, but it was one of, the, one of my fastest growing videos, and then everything stopped. And I lost a lot of subscribers that day. Now, I'm going to tell you the same thing then, now that I did then, right? My channel, this channel, So Chromatic Channel, is all about, really it's all about one thing. And it's one thing with two movements, right? It's one thing with two movements. It's all about, you know, mastering our, our craft. And that craft is, is, begins with our virtues and our values and our beliefs. And then being able to stand watch. Being able to walk the wall. Mastering our craft of being in the field. Master your field craft and develop your tactical virtue. That's what the channel is all about. And so this is where I happen to find myself, right? Is in this moment. Having a conversation that, to be honest with you, I, I didn't want to have to have. I didn't want to have to tell you what I'm about to tell you here in just a, a few seconds. That's exactly where we're at. And at the end of the day, you know what, it, it, it's okay and it is what it is. And if people leave the channel, they leave the channel. And if some of y'all, you want to hang out and have quality conversation like we did in the previous one, man, I'm all for that as well. Because man, the amount of quality comments in the conversation that we had was was, was, was breathtaking. That's why I want to tell you, for everybody who's watching this video, thank you so much for sharing in that conversation down in the comments section on all of the videos. And I'm really, truly thankful uh, because my channel is, it is relatively small, right? It is relatively small. But it's small enough that, that I have the opportunity to respond to each and every single response that's given. And I look forward to doing just that. And so as we get moving, if, you want, if, you want, if you're out there and you want to master your craft and develop your tactical virtue, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on some future content. Feel free to share this video and the last one if you think there are people in your circles who need to, who need to be welcomed into and join in on this conversation. Because I know that there are countless of people out there who do. You see, I know that every day the mainstream media is feeding us information, little nuggets. That, that uh, Some of them are partially true. Some of them are 100% wrong. Some of them we take with a grain of salt. Some of them we don't know how to take. But because it's coming from the media, it, for a lot of people, it must be true. Well, I come from a mindset that says, I, I need more than that editorial. I want meat and 
not just gravy. I don't just want the milk. Give me the meat. I'm old enough. I'm an adult, man. I can do adult things. So if you want to talk to me about uh, this, that, or the third, be ready to bring up some, some good factual data, man. Just because I, I'm, I'm an enlisted service member doesn't mean that I don't have a brain housing group that knows how to work, right? Just because I'm not a politician, just because I'm not a scientist, just because I, I'm really just a regular Joe, GI issue, I can handle it, man. I don't need you to protect me. And just like I know you don't need them to protect you either. But because they have this approach that says we need to take care of you, trust us, that causes us to ask some hard questions. And some of these questions, they need to be asked all the time, every day. We need to ask ourselves first, our family, our friends, our community, and then start to ask those outside of our community, whether or not we're talking about politics, economics, our, 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 our philosophical ideology, right? Our spirituality. I don't, I don't care what the topic is. We need to be able to have open, and honest, and candid conversation where what people like you and I think and believe, it matters and it contributes to the conversation. Because if it's not, if we just continue to get shut down, man, what happens when you get pushed around too much? We don't need to come to that. We don't need to come to that at all. Right, so that kind of draws us in to, to the news uh, that I have to share with you. And it's that uh, about two weeks ago, I tested positive for COVID-19, right? Now, I, I'm, I'm not surprised, to be honest with you. I'm, I've been around a lot of people um, in my organization who've tested positive. And, you know, there have been spikes, you know, here in the state of Washington. So maybe it was just a matter of time. I don't know. Nobody in my family uh, has, has tested positive. My wife hasn't tested positive. It's just kind of another interesting fact for you. Uh, and, and truth be told, like, I, I'm, I'm positive with COVID right now, like right this very second. I want to share with you a, a couple of my observations uh, of having uh, been, been positive and what my experience has been, as well as kind of share, you know, without giving away too much information about the people that I do know, because I do know probably per, on the personal level, on a personal level, I know more than 20 people who have tested positive for COVID-19. And all of their experiences have been the exact same as mine, almost identical, right? Almost identical. I also have been uh, in touch with people on post who take care of our single soldiers and service members who, who test positive as well. And I have some of their uh, story that, that I will also share with you. But back to me, to my story. Um, I, I haven't really, it's not that I've been asymptomatic. Right? I noticed uh, I lost my sense of smell. And that was part of the reason why I went in to get tested. And uh, since then, I, I've had some, some minor body aches and headaches, sinus congestion and pressure. Fatigue a little bit easier than normal, right? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of had uh, some feverish sweats, although I, I never pulled uh, a temperature. I, I was never burning hot. Um, and I know that there are a lot of people out there who've experienced uh, experiences uh, a lot worse than mine, than myself. I don't know, to be honest with you, whether it was just my immune system that, that uh, and what the Army does to us, right? We, we, we drink Motrin and, and run it out and, and tough it out. And maybe, that, maybe that's just me and my experience with this. I don't know. Uh, I, I highly doubt it. Uh, and I don't say all this to, to take light of anybody who's uh, gone through a harder experience. I don't have any underlying health conditions. You know, that, that, well, we do know that that's part of the reason why uh, uh, I'm doing okay. And I, I should be going back to work uh, this, this next week. So I'm looking forward to that. Because, gosh, no work. Work doesn't stop. 
As I mentioned earlier, right, the vast majority of the people I know on a personal level, the one-on-one level, all have experiences extremely similar to mine. No, nobody that I know of has had to go uh, be hospitalized, right? Nobody's had to seek additional uh, medication, you know, going a little quarantine and being isolated from, from some people and just chilling out and taking it easy, taking some over-the-counter medication has seemed to have pretty much done it for them. So that, that's a positive thing, right? And uh, people I know on post who take care of our, our single service members share the exact same experience. The exact same story to me is what they're relaying to me. And they've been doing this for for quite some time. All of this kind of goes contrary to the story that we are being told, right? To the story that we are being told that you and I, we listen to on a day-to-day basis through the mainstream media. My experience is not what we are being told. And my experience falls in line with, with that 98 to 99 percentile bracket of people who test positive for COVID-19. 98 percent of the story is in line with mine. And there's two percent that have a much harder time. And I'm sure that there's a smaller percentage of uh, in between the two percent and the 98 percent, right? But we're not we're not talking about this story. And I get it, man. That 2%, may, it may only be 2%. But man, for, the, for that 2% and what it does to us, I, I think is, is, is newsworthy. So don't misunderstand me on that. Right? It's putting a huge burden uh, on a lot of the infrastructure that's out there. But where we get caused to ask those questions that we were talking about in the first video and the permission to doubt that we'll we'll talk about here in just a second in this one is that there's so much that's not being talked about. Again, you know, we go back to some of the comments that you all left to the first video. Why are we running curfews at night when everybody's sleeping anyways? Why do we have a curfew at night to keep honest people honest, to give us a sense of of security and a sense of well-being that we're doing the right thing? Why do some states that don't lock down have an astronomically higher percentage of COVID-19 cases per capita? They don't. Why are the states who are locking down, why are their numbers not dropping like flies? They aren't. Why is it that we don't know what people who die with COVID-19, what other health conditions that they were dealing with? Why aren't we transparent when it comes to this? We're demanding transparency from our government, which is a good thing, but we're not being transparent about our own health care. Right? Does that make sense, friends? Like we have to be honest with ourselves and honest with the questions that we're asking and demanding others answer back to us. Because it's experiences like mine that are causing people to ask questions, that are leading people to doubt. And I want to tell you, wherever you're at on this spectrum, it's okay to doubt. It's okay to not know the answers. You don't have to know everything about everything. And isn't that kind of how we've been driving in our society? Everything has to be time now. I need to know the answer now, 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 faster, 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 front line, faster, faster. And look at what it does to our psyche. Right? Because if we're, I think, ultimately, I think if we're not okay to be wrong, if we're not okay to doubt, what we hold to be true, then we're setting ourselves up for an existential crisis, both at the individual as well as at the community level. We're not going to know how to define who we are. And it's going to take us down a spiraling path that is completely unhealthy. People throughout the ages 
have dealt with doubt and kept moving forward. And it's okay, friends, to not know, to keep asking and keep moving forward. It's okay to admit that you might be wrong, that your platform might be wrong. It might not have all of the answers. It's okay if you doubt your your spirituality. It's okay if you doubt your own politicians. It's not only okay, it's exactly what we should be doing. It's being open to being wrong, being open for others to impact and intersect our lives so that we can incarnate and flesh out our own values. You see, because as long as we don't stop, as long as we keep moving forward one step at a time, even if we gotta just pick up a shuffle, right? Even if we just gotta pick up a shuffle, you just keep moving, man. Man, and I get it. A lot of us don't wanna ask the hard questions. Because quite frankly, they can scare the living shit out of us. The questions and the answers can. And so we would rather just stay in line with the status quo. Whatever the the platform says, whatever that litmus test is, we're going to stay in the box, right? We're going to stay in the box. Man, we have to do better than that. So give yourself permission to be wrong. And see if it doesn't actually help you encounter people a little bit differently. To be open to their experiences, to be open to their knowledge, to be open to their credibility and and, and everything that they have when they bring it to the table. Instead of just assuming that you're right. This is something that I, I learned a long time ago. To be open to be a question seeker, to ask and knock on those doors. It's not always easy, right? Because there have been times when when I've faced inward and outward asking questions that, to be honest with you, scared the crap out of me. And that's okay. Just keep moving forward. Don't stop. Don't stop enjoyed the content of this conversation do me a favor and smash that like button leave some comments down below we'll just keep this conversation rolling and as always until then you stay out there and you stay still